วัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ We hope you had a great weekend and welcome to Good Morning with Thai PBS World. I'm Hatay t e s h a k i t i r a n a n And I'm Nabuna. We'll begin the program with some good news as the COVID-19 situation has started to ease. Although still very slightly, we can say that the CCSA has decided to ease lockdown restrictions starting from this Wednesday. And as we reported earlier, we will be soon be able to eat out as well as having a haircut, have a foot massage, go shopping. As well as exercising in parks as well. The COVID-19 situation in Thailand is improving, with the rate of daily new infections steadily slowing and more patients recovering at an average of over 20,000 cases a day for the past three weeks, and surpassing new infections for the past 10 days. And if we look at the graph for new infections over the past week, you can see that the number of cases each day have now dropped to below 20,000. But it is, of course, still very high, with daily death toll still showing no sign of abating. But the government spokesman t a n a k o i Wang Bun Kong Shana is confident that this is the beginning of the improvement of the situation. And with this, the CCSA has also decided to ease some restrictions on the current partial lockdown measures by allowing eateries to reopen for dine-in, but with reduced seating capacity and beauty and hair salons, as well as parks, sports venues, and most other shops and malls in 29 provinces in the maximum controlled and restricted zone, which also includes Bangkok, starting this Wednesday. Well, however, the nighttime curfew from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. will Will remain in place for at least two more weeks, while schools will have to conduct online classes only. Other places such as cinemas, theaters, and nightclubs are to remain closed. So, from this Wednesday, shopping malls, community malls, and department stores can fully resume operations. Beauty salons can open for haircuts and only for an hour per customer. Massage parlors can reopen, but only for foot massages. Eateries can provide dine-in services with seating capacity limited to 75% outdoors and half in restaurants, which are air-conditioned. Dine-in customers must also show proof. That they are inoculated and that they have tested negative within the past seven days, and interprovincial buses will also resume on Wednesday as well. And it's beginning to look like normal life once again, but it's not so yet. As for example, we still need to provide proof that we are fully inoculated as well as COVID-free. Exactly, and that's a bit of good news indeed. And nevertheless, I mean, we all need a bit of life outside. Exactly. Now. And but of course, hope all the infections won't bounce back to more than 20,000 cases a day, like before. Which means that we still need to keep our guards up. Exactly. And moving on now to, from infections to vaccination. So more than. 30 million vaccine doses have been administered so far, with about 10% of the population being fully inoculated. So, to accelerate the campaign, the government has ordered more vaccines, which are AstraZeneca and Pfizer. According to government spokesperson t a n a k o n Wang Bun Kong c h a n a the Thai government has negotiated the purchase of 2 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine per month with the European Union, and the procurement of two and a half to three million doses of Pfizer vaccine per month from September to December. And by the end of this year, Thailand will have received about 140 million doses of vaccines. The government will procure more vaccines for those aged 12 to 18 years old to make the reopening of schools and colleges possible. The CCSA has already worked out the sandbox safety zone and schools program to be trialed in some selected boarding schools. So more than 573,000 teachers have been inoculated, but there are about 4 million students who are yet to be vaccinated. The CCSA has already approved the smart control. And living with COVID-19 concept, which encompasses mass vaccinations to create herd immunity, mass screenings using antigen test kits or ATK, and ensuring COVID-19-free environment in workplaces and businesses.
And speaking of efforts in accelerating the vaccination of the population, as there are still many being left out, even for their first doses, the Julapon Royal Academy will also provide AstraZeneca and Sinovac jabs to anyone aged at least 18 years old. So registrations are opening today from 9 a.m. onwards. So we can see that actually over the past few weeks, the vaccination has been sped up as opposed to the beginning of the mass campaign in June, couldn't add. Right. So it is actually a month away also for more mRNA vaccines to be delivered. So things seem to look good for the near future. Um, however, with only a tenth of the population fully vaccinated against COVID-19, we have to admit that the vaccination plan really needs to to speed up even more. Exactly. And now let's move on to tourism as Thailand is gradually but still very cautiously reopening. When we think of the most beautiful beaches in Thailand, we would often think of Krabi, which is among the first that comes to many people's minds. Right now, the province is now focusing on mindful tourism with its Krabi Go Green initiative. Let's find out more in this report by Stephanie Adair. Krabi, famous for its breathtaking beaches characterized by its limestone cliffs and dense mangrove forests, this paradise wonderland is now looking to go green. In 2013, the province announced the Krabi Declaration, which aims to drive low-carbon tourism with stakeholders coming together to support the idea. The Grubi Go Green initiative is designed to aid the transformation and help locals understand that building a sustainable and eco-friendly hub for tourists is the way to go. The initiative is supported by Dr. Siwarit Pongsakon Rungsin from Walailak University, who has spent a decade researching greener possibilities for this mangrove paradise. ที่ใช้กิจกรรมการท่องเที่ยวสีเขียวพยายามขับเคลื่อนการทําไม่ว่าจะเป็นธุรกิจหรือภาคชุมชนนะครับมีการปลูกฝังไอเดียมุมมอง
Exactly. And when we open up, definitely. And of course, we wouldn't want to, uh, who wouldn't want to go back to pristine beaches? Exactly, and, and everything is getting better as well. Exactly. And uh, now let's have a look at the other stories in our daily roundout. So Bangpu Industrial Estate in Samut Bragan province was flooded yesterday morning following several hours of heavy rain overnight. All roads in the industrial estate were impassable except by trucks while many cars in the estate were half submerged. Workers tried to remove the flood waters from the estate by activating four huge water pumps, but it took at least six to seven hours before the estate was cleared. So several roads and housing estates in Samut Bragan have also been flooded as well. Moving on to politics, several protests took place yesterday in Bangkok and other provinces, and this includes a car mob in Bangkok. This is to demand the Prime Minister's resignation and also condemn the chilling police brutality that killed a drug suspect. Another clash between hardcore protesters and crowd control police took place again yesterday in Dindang as well. The Karma protest leader Natwood Saige announced that they will gather again from this Thursday onwards at a Seoul BTS station, which coincides with this week's censure debate, which will begin tomorrow. And on to sports. Thailand won the first gold medal in the Tokyo Paralympic Games yesterday as Pong Sagan Bayo, gold medalist from the previous games, won the men 400 meter wheelchair race and fought in 46 and 61 seconds, breaking the previous record by 0.21 seconds. One silver and three bronze medals have also been won by other Thai athletes in table tennis and wheelchair racing. And the first medal won was by Sai Suni Dana in the wheelchair fencing. Congratulations to all and great news for Thailand indeed. Exactly. Provincial health officials in Sumut Barakan province have decided to separate male and female COVID patients at a field hospital for COVID-19 patients in Bangli district after it was discovered that some patients were being accused of engaging in sexual activity and drug abuse. Only some cigarettes have been found by police without any illegal drugs, but a group of local officials have been deployed to watch all the patients who have been warned they may transfer they may be transferred elsewhere if they indulge in similar activities again. And now it's time for Empowering Thai Women, where we connect you to amazing women who are successful and influential in their own ways. In this episode, we interview Shannon Galianamid, who will tell us the challenges of that women face in the tech and business world, as well as how her leadership style has changed over the years. I think I was a little bit more vocal than most people. I'm, I'm an extreme extrovert and, and optimist. I think one of the biggest things that was my learning was um, being able to accept who I am, understanding my strengths and weaknesses, being able to build on it and, and, and just to push on what I can do you know, going forward. In Thailand's tech and business world, Shannon Galianamit is among the top female leaders in many people's minds. Currently the CEO of 5G Catalyst Technologies and a partner advisor to Gobi Partners, Shannon has been a strong advocate for women's empowerment, paving the way for more women in leading roles for the past 20 years. Shannon believes that the role of women in business has changed for the better, compared to the past where there weren't many role models for women to look up to. We noticed that there weren't enough women on the panels speaking, we called it a manal, which is a man panel. Then when we started talking about, hey, you know, you should have a, a, a women stage or some women on the speaker panel, we actually got a lot of slack for it because saying that we're creating the divide or we're trying to alienate men if we have women, you know, talks and whatnot. But in reality, there weren't many paths for women 
to seek resources or knowledge or or have anything tailored towards them towards us at that time so a lot of these women groups have have come together to basically try to push this and help elevate each other which i think is another big big difference between 20 years ago and now when shannon was pregnant with her twins she was sourcing investment for her startup company she said it became obvious to her that what are holding women back are culture and norms, where she thinks the mindset needs to be changed. And so I remember going to a, bun a bunch of investors and they basically looked at me and I was pregnant and they basically said, you know, hey, um, how are you going to have the twins and have your startup as well? Um, can you really do both? Can you like multitask? And, and how, how do I know you won't like be 100% on your startup. Um, and those are still some notions that um, women founders, women entrepreneurs still get to this very day. You see a bunch of women CEOs, women C, uh, CFOs, C-suites and managers here, and yet they can still do what they're doing. Um, so that's still something that people have to deal with every day. Um, and men don't get this question. Culture and norms come from an idealized perception of what a leader should be. As Shannon reveals, she was discriminated against by some of her bosses, as people still have stereotypical views of women. She also said she is not one of those stereotypical CEO or CMO, but she has different ways of approaching things. So um, I think that the gender bias came from the fact that you know I was in a marketing role, uh, something that is women, you know, like if you're in a C-suite, you're either marketing or maybe finance, right? But you're not CEO, right? Because CEO needs to be aggressive and hard, needs to know everything, uh, and not this bubbly and you know smiley person. As Shannon reflects on her career from her beginnings in banking, working at various companies before running her own startup. She believes that her leadership style has improved over the years. Although she describes herself as a good project manager, she admits that she wasn't a team player and that her style was too commanding. Later, she became too lenient and too nice, which resulted in low productivity. So I think the thing that's changed is there's still firmness in the vision and how you run things. Um, and the goals that we set, but how you run things and the mechanism of how you get there is still flex. So I think um, between the two, uh, I think I've been able to strike a, a much better um, leadership style than I did in the past 10 years. Being a single mother of twin daughters also comes with challenges. Shannon said the main difference between how she was raised and how she teaches her children is freedom. She said her daughters have the freedom to do whatever they want to do, regardless of their gender. The biggest difference, I know that um, a lot of what my mother and other older relatives have taught me um, really came from their heart, right? They, they don't want to see me hurt. They don't want to see me get into a situation that I cannot get myself out of, um, which is why they're like, don't do it. You know, maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe you shouldn't try in this. Maybe you shouldn't, maybe you should just be an accountant. Um, maybe you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. So I don't mean to say that they taught me anything wrong. On the flip side, for me, um, I do want to see my kids try. And I want to see my kids fail, but I also want to see them learn from it right so whenever they do something i actually want to wait and see what happens there and then um if they if they cry if they trip and fall if they are embarrassed then then we deal with it and we work through the progress when you are truly yourself and when you are truly working on all the great strengths that you have um you feel so much better. Your self-esteem is so much better. Your performance and productivity is so much better. You are happier around your friends and family um, and you're just happier on yourself. And I think that um, there's always ways of improvement, but it's your 
uh, terms that you rule out for yourself of what you want to improve, not what society wants you to improve. Um, and so I think, I think that's, that's what empowerment means to me. We have to admit that even though Thailand has a number of women CEOs, we still have to admit that the cultural and society's expectations are still holding women back until today. But for the past 20 years of Shannon's career, she has paved the way for more women to take up leading roles, especially in the tech and business world, which has been deemed as the male dominant industry. Definitely, Kanad. And there have been slightly more women in science and tech over recent years, which is a step in the right direction, but we still need some more for these industries to exactly. be more gender balanced and not to mention equal pays as well. Right. And with that inspirational story, we wrap up this edition of Good Morning with Thai PBS World. Don't forget to follow us on our social media and our website, worldwideweb.thaipbsworld.com, and for all the latest updates and in-depth analyses. So do have a nice Monday morning. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I will see you tomorrow. Swadika. Swadika.